Update 3.11 is out and as we near the ending of book 3 we have 4 new weapons and refines to talk about. An odd bunch of units, this time we have Athena, Gordon, Tsubaki aka Quick Repulse Fodder and Fimo Kana. Poor male Kana got left out. We'll be taking a look at each of their new weapons and refines and as a reminder you can grab their new weapons at 5 star rarity. All you need is some SP for those but if you want 3 refined defects you'll need 200 divine dew which is pricey. You want to make sure you spend your divine dew wisely. First up is Athena, the poor sword infantry unit that has been overshadowed by many new fast sword masters since her release. Athena gets the Concealed Blade, a 16 might woe down essentially. That means she'll get plus 10 damage when her special triggers. Nothing fancy, but if you grab the special refine, then Concealed Blade also gets Desperation 3 as well. If Athena has less than 75% HP and she initiates combat, then she gets to make a follow up attack before the foe can counter. This pairs nicely with her high 38 base speed and while there are faster sword users, a lot of them are going to be much harder to get. As a 3-4 to four star unit, you can fish around for a plus speed Athena if you wish and that will be one of her better boons with this new weapon. By taking out Desperation from the B slot and slapping it in the weapon slot, Athena opens up a lot of room for other powerful B skills to combo off of and we'll talk about those in a bit. Athena's main goals will be to get those doubles and proc as many specials as possible to get that extra damage. She has pretty low HP so you will have to keep an eye on her when she gets into desperation range. Now how does Athena compare to the OG Sword Lin whose Sokati got a desperation plus Brash Assault refine? The way I see it Lin doesn't have to worry about speed as much since Brash Assault can get her that follow up attack to use with desperation. However, Athena has higher attack and speed than Lin, plus that will die effect on her weapon so she can output more damage. In exchange, Athena does have to worry about speed and fighting other high speed units may hurt her. It's also a lot harder to get Lin than Athena so for anyone who wants to invest heavily in either one, that's going to be a factor. Now for builds, we pretty much want to focus on the player phase since desperation only works there. Plus speed boons or plus attack boons for the plus 10 merge Athena will be your best bet and as a reminder you can still change boons even at plus 10 merges so you aren't locked in forever. First up, let's talk about how to squeeze as much true damage out of Concealed Blade. By adding Flashing Blade 4 and Wrath, we have 3 sources of true damage plus special cooldown. Flashing Blade 4 is amazing for Athena since she gets plus 5 true damage per hit and the extra special cooldown can work nicely with the Desperation effect. Combine this with Wrath and in the right situation, Athena can get 30 true damage off without getting touched. This does also include a special proc and obviously you'll want Moonbow since it's 2 cooldown and can be charged by Flashing Blade on the first hit while proccing it on the second hit. The only caveat with this super high investment build is that Carla and Marita exist and both can also do similar things. Carla especially is pretty nuts if you just want true damage on hit. Still, if you really like Athena, then she can pull off this build nicely. Next, a cheaper option is just good old Fury. Combos with Desperation perfectly and with an open B slot, Athena can get creative. Special Spiral is nice since she always wants to proc specials and the Sacred Seal slot can house Brazen Attack and Speed since that is another synergistic skill for Desperation builds. For additional B skills, there are things like Vantage which is always annoying although it doesn't combo super well or anything here. Escape Route can be fun with a Fury build if you want a mobile squad. Chill Speed can also be useful to help Athena or her team handle high speed enemies. If you can get an extra Claude, then Lull Speed and Defense is also pretty nice since it helps Athena win those speed battles and also ensures that she gets some extra damage. Overall, I know Athena gets a lot of flack for being stat power crept, but she is still usable for non high tier PvP content, and this new weapon is rather nice. If you thought Lin's Refine was neat but never got her, then Athena is another option. You can go for premium skills if you want, or the cheaper Fury and Brazen Tag and Speed builds will serve just fine as well. Moving on, we have Gordon, one of our earliest archers. He got the renowned bow, and it's a 9 might brave bow with its usual minus 5 speed penalty. It has 2 more might than a regular brave bow, so that's quite nice. For the special refined upgrade, renowned bow inflicts minus 4 attack and defense on foes within 2 spaces during combat. This is essentially like Darja's Hex, it's a 2 space debuff that always works and helps Gordon and potentially his allies as well. Now this is a very solid effect considering Gordon has a brave bow. His foes will lose 4 defense and Gordon gets to attack that twice for 8 extra damage. He doesn't have the highest attack stat ever but as a 3-4 to four star unit you're going to want to fish for a plus attack boon. He also is very slow and with that minus 5 speed penalty Gordon will not be pumping out quad attacks unless you have some serious speed buffs. 
Renowned Bow is a pretty simple weapon. Gordon gets more damage with his Brave Bow, and he's going to take less damage too. He does have a decent 32 defense, so he can survive some physical blows, and we can take advantage of this with a certain build. Now, compared to Klein, who also got a Brave Bow refined, Gordon is only looking for those two-shot KOs. He just doesn't have the speed to pull off quads, and Klein's Brave Bow only has a minus two speed penalty, plus he is much faster anyway. However, if we only need two shots, then who cares about speed, and Gordon can get some interesting builds to grow that two-shot kill range. Last month, we had Hawkeye, who had a low skill added on his weapon. I mentioned stacking two lulls together, but I did not think it was worth it for him specifically. However, for Gordon, we can do a similar thing, and I definitely think it's a viable option. Renowned Bow will inflict minus four defense on the foe, and that's gonna stack with low attack and defenses, minus three defense debuff. That is minus seven defense in total, and Gordon gets that against any enemy he faces. Combine this with the usual Brave Bow skills like Death Blow, and oh boy, that is some pretty scary stuff. Because brave weapons hit twice in a row, all attack buffs or defense debuffs become twice as effective. With low attack and defense, Gordon's foes won't even have defense field buffs so they cannot hide from his two shot assault. Unfortunately, Gordon's enemy phase isn't that great, but he will inflict minus 7 attack as well, so that could save him potentially. I'm not sure if this build is enough to take out super tanks, but I think it has a lot of potential and definitely should be strong enough for PvE content. If you want survivability, then another player phase build can utilize Sturdy Impact since it grants plus 10 defense and stops one follow up attack. That pushes Gordon to over 40 defense, which means 20 plus damage bonfire specials, and I mention this because you can pair it with Special Spiral. With bonfire on a 3 turn cooldown, once it procs, Special Spiral brings it down to 1 cooldown, and since Gordon has a brave bow, he's gonna proc bonfire in his second hit, and we can chain this over and over. Sturdy Impact is great if you can afford it since it also boosts Gordon's survivability in the case he doesn't kill his target, plus he's still getting the extra damage. With plus 10 defense and also inflicting minus 4 attack, that's a lot of physical damage reduction. For Sacred Seals, we have two strong options. Sturdy Blow is simple and works with a brave weapon, plus you can pair it with Sturdy Impact for plus 14 defense on initiations. Another option is Chill Defense, which is a field debuff, so it's going to stack with Renowned Bow's in combat debuff. That can get you to minus 11 defense on the enemy's highest defense tank, and if you use it with low attack and defense, that goes up to minus 14 defense. An enemy with 50 defense gets dragged all the way back to 36 defense, plus they're not going to get any defense field buffs, and Gordon can have attack buffs as well. Pretty wild stuff, and I think that's not a bad combo considering you can just have chill defense on a teammate anyway. Gordon got a pretty nifty weapon, and while it's fine with the basic death blow brave bow setup, if you got those stronger skills, he can gain some crazy advantages. Our third new weapon is for Tsubaki. He got himself the Golden Naginata, and it's definitely one of the more interesting weapons considering how odd Tsubaki is as a unit. The Golden Naginata is a 16 might slaying lance that also grants plus 3 to all stats if the enemy has 3 or more attack than Tsubaki at the start of combat. So, Tsubaki's main flaw is that he has absolutely awful base attack at only 25. This weapon is only going to get a neutral attack 5 star Tsubaki to 41 attack total, so most of the time he'll have no problem getting those extra stats. The interesting thing is that the refine for Golden Naginata grants Tsubaki plus 7 damage on hit if he starts combat with more than or equal to 70% HP. This is 7 true damage, and Tsubaki actually has decent speed, so if he can get a follow-up attack, that helps him out a lot. A very neat ability, and it definitely tries to help Tsubaki's low base attack stat. He also has quick repose for a follow-up attack, and it also has that 70% HP threshold, so if you stick with that, you want Tsubaki to be healthy all the time. If we look at Tsubaki's base stats, he is a very strange unit. High speed and defense isn't a common occurrence, and it can make Tsubaki rather hard to KO if you fight him with physical damage. He has a tough time actually dealing damage, but Golden Naginata adds plus 3 attack and 7 true damage on hit with the slang effect, and it seems to help him out a lot. I think improving his speed for more doubles helps a ton and can benefit Tsubaki on player phase or enemy phase. This weapon sounds really good, but is it practical? That's going to be tough to answer because this is a pretty unique effect for a unit with an unusual stat line. I think it might run into issues if you just have a non-merge 5 star Tsubaki, but if this is a fully invested one, then I can see it having more value. For builds, I want to start off simple because Golden Naginata works perfectly fine with Tsubaki's default quick repose. With two attacks, that's going to get Tsubaki 14 extra damage, and he can use a 3 turn special like Bonfire to proc it in one round thanks to the slang effect. 
use your regular tanky skills like close defense or steady stance, and hopefully Subwalking can stay above that 70% HP threshold. You can go with Renewal, but if not, then another close defense Sacred Seal or steady stance will be fine. Without super crazy investment, Subaki is still a decent high defense lance flyer, and he can tank melee threats just fine. With Golden Naginata, his damage output improves a ton, and he can also probably get that plus 3 all stats on top. Once he does drop out of quick repose range, he's gonna be pretty bad, but this is where some investment in his speed can come into play. Other defensive tools include the fortress skills, and you may be asking why would I want to reduce this poor man's attack even lower than it is? Well, it can help activate Golden Naginata's stat boost if you want to run a plus attack Tsubaki, since he comes with an attack super boom. It may also be helpful if you run Tsubaki in a team that shares attack buffs like attack tactic. A benefit of fortress skills is that they are always active, so Tsubaki can initiate with extra defense and res, and that can help him stay above 70% HP. B skill choice can be varied and include quick repose, guard, renewal, or anything else you want. I definitely think if you aren't running renewal or a healing special like Aether, then Subaki is going to want to run teammates like Air or the Heron Dancers. Both have healing abilities and any little helps, especially one that gets Subaki's 7 extra damage per attack. Last, we have something really dumb I was theory crafting, and it's not something I'm saying is going to work. Since Golden Naginata gets us true damage, why not add Savage Blow or even double Savage Blow skills? If Tsubakin can chip away at the enemy team and then get them to low HP, he can finish the job with Golden Naginata even if he's going to be dealing zero base damage. To get to this point, you need survivability and healing, so an impact skill would be ideal, but a solo skill could also be useful. Combine this with Mystic Boost for healing every turn, maybe even a healing special, and we get a super annoying, somewhat fast unit that is chipping away at the enemy team's HP bars. Ideally, you're going to want to run this in a team comp where everyone's running Savage Blow, just to be super annoying. This is not your everyday average use, but I could maybe see a place for Tsubaki on a very super niche defense setup. He can survive initiations with an impact skill, and he can use drag back or hit and run to retreat. Maybe he gets dance, you can also run Gale Force since it's going to have it on a 4 cooldown. Pair that with something like Legendary Hector, you can get it down to 3 cooldown. Again, I'm just throwing ideas out there, I am not advocating you go out and do this right now. Tsubaki with Golden Naginata is one of those cases where I have no clue how to rate him. Flying tanks don't have the best skill options out there, but they can make it work, and Tsubaki's normal damage output is just so sad with no damage specials. I don't think he's going to become a top tier meta unit, but there is room for some creative builds, and I'd love to see what you guys can come up with. Last on today's list, we have female Kana. The only natural 5 star unit on this list, Kana was bound to probably get something pretty good, and I think she got just that. Her new weapon is the Sun Dragonstone, and it has 16 might. If the foe initiates combat, or if a field buff like Rally or Hone is not active on the foe, then Kana gets plus 4 to all stats during combat. It also has the ranged adaptive damage effect like all Dragonstones have. So right off the bat, this is a pretty good weapon. Kana originally had the Water Breath Dragonstone, which granted plus 4 defense and res when attacked. Sun Dragonstone is that, but better by granting plus 4 attack and speed as well, plus this effect can potentially proc on the player phase 2 if the enemy is not buffed. To help in this endeavor, the special refine grants low attack and speed 3, inflicts minus 3 attack and speed on the foe, and it neutralizes any attack or speed field boss during combat. Very nasty add-on, this is a great skill for Kana. The minus 3 attack and speed debuff is always working, so it basically means Kana is going to be having plus 4 attack and plus 7 speed defense and res during the enemy phase. The low skill also neutralizes attack and speed buffs on the enemy, and this helps proc Dragonstone on the player phase. It doesn't cover defense or res buffs, but still covering half of the available buffs is nice. This is a pretty crazy weapon and refine. It works well for Kana because she has very balanced stats. With Sun Dragonstone, she gets so much useful stats, and the low skill gets rid of enemy attack and speed buffs, which neutralize many scary threats. It's super easy to activate since it always works in the enemy phase, and as such, Kana can run some beastly defensive setups. She becomes a huge stat stick, which can be tough to deal with, and attacking her on the player phase is super disadvantageous since you can't get rid of those combat buffs and debuffs. For the sake of discussion, if a low a defense and res skill becomes available, would it be worthwhile to use on Kana? Well, it would reduce enemy defense and res by minus 3, so Kana would basically rock plus 7 to all stats, and it will always work since the low defense and res skill 
will get rid of defense and res buffs. This means the foe will have no buffs at all, which fulfills the condition of Sun Dragonstone. At this point, you basically get plus 7 to all stats and full buff neutralization at all times. Kana can run some really strong B skills though, so as we go through them, just think about it if that's worth using over a theoretical low defense and res B skill. Things are gonna get pretty disgusting here. Sun Dragonstone is a solid enemy phase weapon, so adding Distant Counter is a no brainer. Tons of extra stats, and you can buff her with regular field buffs too. B skill options are pretty open. No C Disrupt could work, but I do worry about Kana's damage a little. You also got good old Quick Repose, Guard, or Renewal. Pair any of these with a defensive sacred seal like a stand skill or distant defense and, well, Kana's not gonna go down easy. One downside of a build like this is that Kana's player phase takes a hit. It's not guaranteed that the enemy will not be buffed, so Dragonstone may not be active. To make her a stronger attacker, you can give her offensive skills like Swift Sparrow, Attack and Speed Solo, or even just something like Darting Blow. You want something that makes her a threat if the enemy isn't willing to attack her first. Pair this with smoke skills like attacker speed smoke and then if Kana does make an attack, the enemies just ends up in a worse position if they want to challenge her on the enemy phase. To help Kana out, give her teammates with panic type abilities like Aversa or any typical panic ploy user. If the enemy wants to avoid panic, they may end up in an odd position or they're going to get hit by panic and if that happens then Sun Dragonstone will activate, making Kana a player phase nightmare as well. This weapon is very good because if the enemy has zero defense or res buffs then Kana always gets her extra stats. So finally let's discuss some other good skills you can choose because Kana has tons of viable build options. For the defensive side, steady or warding stance 4 would be disgusting since they grant guard plus more stats. A breath A skill lets Kana charge up specials very fast and bonus doubler combined with all her in combat buffs from Sun Dragonstone just make me sad to think about. If you want more damage, then Wrath or Special Spiral can be nasty for dueling, and then Desperation can be used if you go a more speed-oriented Kana. Mystic Boost can be annoying on such a fast tanky unit, and Flashing Blade as a seal can be another offensive tool. Not listed is Vantage, which I still think is fantastic these days. If you're using Kana as your raid boss unit in things like Aether Raids, I hate seeing Vantage, so it's just demoralizing when you cycle through your whole team and you see that all of them die to one unit just because they have Vantage. Luckily, as a green dragon, female Kana is deathly allergic to any falchion user, but as an infantry dragon she won't be sniped out of the air or hit hard by armor smashers. She is also a 5 star oni unit so while not easy to get, I think we're going to be seeing her a lot more from here on out. I dread seeing dragons with crazy stats, first it was Noe and then Fae, Legendary Tiki, Fallen Corn and Young Tiki, and I have a sinking feeling Kana is going to be added to that list. She may not have been that impressive before, but I definitely think she is worth having now. So what do you guys think about these new refines? Will you be using any of them? And let everyone know what kind of build ideas you got. I think this is a pretty good batch surprisingly. Kana definitely is much better off despite being a 5 star unit already and I like everyone else's refines too. Tsubaki kind of throws me for a loop. I think it's a good weapon and refine but I don't know how much worth it it's going to be using unless you have a beastly high invested Tsubaki already. Thanks for watching, be back tomorrow because it's time to talk about our new Sacred Stones banner in full. I'll see you guys soon.